Did you want to start with anything or just? No, hey, I'm ready for any questions. All right, we'll start with questions. Who wants to start us? Yeah, I, I can go. Jeff Cameron from the Curry Journal. I know after the game on um, last, last Sunday, you said you, you wanted to see how the, the team um, responded in practice. Uh, how have they been since that loss? And did you, you kind of get the response that you were looking for? Uh, yeah, we've had some some really good practices. We got back to work on Wednesday, so we had good practice Wednesday, Thursday. Um, you know, try, trying to get it to be a little more player driven, uh, so our coaches don't have to bring the the energy. Uh, just got 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 to get a little chip on our shoulder. Um, you know that that's one thing we have not played with, and it's something we need to have uh, if we're going to try and make a run here uh starts off on sunday with a chance to uh win the a- acc regular season and then you know following up qu- quickly after that with a acc tournament so you know i i expect a good day of practice today and tomorrow and then it's going to be can we turn that over into a game i, I guess jeff a follow-up to that do, do you Talk to the, the team about the implications of this game of winning ACC and obviously um, a one seed in the, the tournament. Oh, yeah. The the players are quite aware of what, what's at stake. Um, you know, I think that's my job. I mean, if you can't play with a little bit of pressure, boy, you probably picked the wrong school to come to. Uh, so they understand what's at stake. Now it's just us going out and executing. It's you know, we get a little panic in us, unfortunately, and it's not its not a good thing when shots don't go in. Uh, um, we have this mindset, if we're down five, there's like such a thing as a five-point shot, where we we just got to get back to our fundamentals and and execute at the offensive end, get the best shot we can, try try to set your teammates up, and then get a stop. But that unfortunately, we, we get into a little bit of a panic, and uh, we've addressed that, we've ta- talked about it, and hopefully – we won't see that anymore in, in close games. Is is that type of panic a little worse when Dana's shots aren't falling? Because they've fallen all year, and I, that was the rare day where her shots weren't falling. Well, yeah, you know what? It, it was, and, and there, there there's some things that I've shown Dana. I, you know, I show, showed her the way she started the third quarter, how effective she was uh, getting everybody else the ball. Because teams are they're, – they're blitzing her. They're bringing two or three players at her. Now they're challenging her. Okay, can you make this next read? Um, and I've talked to her about it. You know, I, we we printed out stats of all of our final four runs here in nine, thirteen, and eighteen. And you know, there was a few games where where Shoney took seven shots. Durr took eight shots in one game. Um, Angel, she's different because Angel was getting five steals that led to five shots of her own. She get three or four offensive rebounds. Angel got nine shots on her own. I didn't. I didn't have to do anything for. Her. Um, and that's what I just talked about to Dana. I'm like, hey, there might be some games you only might take seven, seven, eight shots. But if you're making the right read, you're going to get 10, 12 assists, and that's just as productive. And, you know, as a competitor, obviously, you know, the last thing she wanted to do was go five for 21 or five for 22, whatever it was. Um, but it, it, it's good growth. It's good for her. Um, you know, and I, I think she took that, what I tried, tried, tried to explain to her, and has really – Tried to pra- practice that the, the the past two days in practice of, of pretending, hey, shots aren't going in, so now I got to work to get somebody else the ball. So I was really proud of him. Hey, it's a game on Sunday. I mean, for us, it's a, it's a huge game. Um, I, I, obviously – you know, to, to be able to say you've won this league or share, had a share of it twice, then won it outright twice is pretty darn impressive. Um, you know, when people expect you to win, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to win. Uh, and then when you have a game like we had against Florida State, everybody thinks the world's coming to an end. Um, you know, but we do know, and I've stressed it in years past, our margin for error is slim. And we've got to make sure we're doing everything we can to give ourselves the advantage and benefit to win dur- d- during these games. Uh, Jeff, it's Eric Crawford. Um, you know, you know, you knew going into the season there were going to be some losses uh, up and down the line. You you probably didn't. You don't ever want one. You certainly don't want one late in the year. 
but I mean, how do you balance that between you guys got to take this to heart and, and get serious and get moving again and having them not, not get too down from it because it is, you know, it, they're just going to happen sometimes. No, it does. And that's the one thing that, you know, we have to learn to control, control the controllables, as they say, and not worry about things that we can't control. Our effort, we can control. Our body language, we can control. If shots don't go in, you can't always control that, but you can control what shots you take. So we have addressed those things. We've talked about those things. And, you know, normally the great thing about basketball is you don't have to wait a week before playing your next game. But for us, you know, this was like a football. You went for, from Sunday to Sunday. And I hope it was good for us because I wanted it to sting for a while. It needed to sting. It needed – they needed to realize, hey, we had a chance to win the ACC outright and absolutely were terrible. And I'll take resp- responsibility for that too. But at the same time, I, I, I tell the players, I can't play for you. Like you have to play with some passion also. It just can't be me coaching with passion. You've got to play with it. So they accepted that too. And I I do expect to see a different level of intensity up at Notre Dame. Jeff, Jeff, it is. Go ahead, Eric. Go ahead, Cameron. You're good. Um, It it is strange, Jeff, when you, you did nothing but play basketball games in January. And then we get to February and it's like it's week on, week off. You got to take a week pause. Uh, that is bound to kind of to to get with players too, just a little bit. Um, how are they doing? Just kind of navigating this little different rhythm, which is just about to change again. Well, I, the, the players are fine, and to be honest, Eric, I, I, I can't even use that as that as an excuse because it's you know the one little pause we had was like having a bye week. You know, we played on Thursday, didn't play Sunday, came back on Thursday. Now, granted, we we weren't able to have full practice or things like that for a few days, but it, it wasn't like what we experienced right there before Christmas time, where it was like three weeks. Um, and then, you know, we played Sunday. We gave off Monday and Tuesday like we would nor- normally do um, if we had a Thursday off. And now we've we've been back at it. So, you know, I, I feel good about where we are. Plus, the rest was needed. So I was actually pleased that we had our little buy when when we had it on thursday so you you should see a lot of excited and a lot of energy from from our kids on thursday on sunday and then we'll uh, we'll we'll get back home here figure out if we're going to be a one seat or two seat in the acc tournament and then we'll uh, we'll start up on friday in that jeff cameron again when you look at this notre dame team How different are they from the team that you played a couple weeks ago? I mean, they've won a couple in a row, beat Florida State a couple days ago. Obviously, it should be a pretty good test for you all. No, I think it's going going to be a great game. Uh, Matty Westbelt's playing extremely well. Olivia Miles, the early enrollee, uh, played well against us here. She's had some consistent games of playing well. Um, You know, they play that matchup, that that 2-3 zone. It's not necessarily a matchup. It's an old school two three zone. They bump the wings back and really are going to challenge you to be patient at the offensive end. They want you to hold the ball. They want you to hold it and jab and ball fake and just do all this stuff slow. You've got to move it. You've got to, if you're going to shot fake, it's got to be a quick shot fake. And then when they fall for it, you've got to attack them. Um, you know, I thought in the game let, let last night against Florida State, they Notre Dame did a really good job of dictating the, the tempo of that game. And we've got to make sure that we're ready to play with a lot of passion and energy to dictate the tempo to them. Hey, Jeff, this is Gary Graves from AP. Uh, can, can you think back to like Dana's freshman and, and sophomore years in terms of how you had to keep her encouraged uh, after maybe – a, a bad shooting game and, and, and really kind of, you know, keep her engaged with the program, you know, especially back then when, you know, there was talk of her transferring. Well, the, the, the good thing about it, the, uh, the uh, talk of her tra- transferring was when she was upset after a bad game. You know, it's, it's, it's what I laugh about because her, uh, her, her parents have been fantastic. Her dad's always been great. Um, you know, we had a situation once at her freshman year after a game 
you know, she's talking about transferring and this and that. And then her, she comes in the next morning and she's like, Hey coach, I'm sorry. You know, I talked to my dad last night and he said he, he wouldn't have played me as much as you did. You know, when, when, when you've got parents like she has that are able to evaluate and really look at their daughter's performance and tell her, Hey, you did great. You did bad. Here are areas you have to work on. That's why Dana's been as successful as she is. Not only does she put the work in, but she's got level-headed parents behind her that are able to look at situations and go, you know what? You weren't very good. You got, you have to get better. And that doesn't always happen. You know, it, it just doesn't. As we all know, a lot of times, hey, you know, my kid's always great. I've got four kids. You know, they, they do no wrong. And unfortunately, that's just not re- reality. So for Dana, she's had that great support at home. And she's been able to, to, at times, take a step back when she needs to and realize, okay, this is what I have to do. And that's why her journey has been like it's been. And I'm, I'm excited to watch to see what happens after her college career is over. I'm looking forward to seeing her continue to grow in her pro- professional career. Uh, but for her, the one thing I can tell you is this, if she's 19 for 21 or five for, for 21, she still thinks the next one's going in. So I'm not worried about where her psyche is or anything like that. She works at her game and because she works at it, she gets good results. Yeah. I guess as a follow-up, you know, in, in, in light of, of, of Sunday, you know, how do you, how have you kind of seen her kind of brushing that off and maybe making her a little bit more determined to, to bounce back in this game? It, it, Ari, it's the way she's always been. I'm, I mean, it is, if she has, if we don't win, she has a bad game. She, she, she moves on to the next. She's ready to go out there and compete. She knows she can't do anything about our game on Sunday. There's nothing she, she, she can do about it. She does the same thing. She's back in the gym on Monday and Tuesday shooting. She's working on her game. She's working on her pull-up, working on her three. That's the sign of great players. She's just not in the gym when things go well. You know, she has a routine that she sticks to. She watched Asia Durr do that for three years, for, for two years. Asia had a shooting routine she did every single day. Doesn't matter if she wasn't feeling well, had a good day or a bad day. She did it. And that's what Dana does. And that's why I don't worry about – Oh, is she in a shooting slump? No, it was just one one bad day. She'll she'll be back at it on Sunday, competing at the highest. Anything else for coach? Yeah, hey, hey coach. Uh, yeah, I got another one. Yeah, I Gary. Guess, yeah, um, you know, with the tournaments coming up and and the the bubble environments, I guess that that will 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 be there. Um, how do you prepare your, your, your team for that as opposed to say, you know, what you've gone through basically since last summer? You know what, have you ever been to the beach or, 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 or the, the lake and they've got those bubbles that the kids can get in and be on the water, mm-hmm. you know, you can move it on the water. I'm getting every one of my players that, and we are going to stay in those. Uh, and with the way we've guarded at times, we can wear them during games too, because we like to, you know, stay about five or six feet away from somebody. Uh, no, I mean, Gary, it's, it's, we just talked about it as a staff. The NCAA tournament's going to come, you know, and you're, we're, we're going to get picked for it and we're going to do everything we can to make sure we stay away from everybody. So we don't get this virus, but you've got, you're, you're going to have 64 teams. And if, if this tournament, the men's and women's, I think they have their 65 or whatever the men do, but if both of these tournaments can go off without one team happen to forfeit because of the virus, it'd be an absolute amazing accomplishment. And I don't think anybody can argue that. Because it's it's a lot of teams, and you just don't know. It's not like somebody's walking around with a light bulb above their head saying, "I've got the virus. Stay away from me." You don't. You know, there are a lot of 
pe- people that have no symptoms. So it, it's going to be a challenge, Gary. There's no question. We're going to continue to do everything we've done. We've talked to our players about it. And as I've said before, the players have done an unbelievable job. Now it's it's everybody else, too. It, it, it's everybody else because support staff, they have to know how important it is for them to, to l- l- limit their interaction with everyone also. Hey, Jeff, this came again. I'll follow up to that. It, sometimes it's hard for players when you're used to having this like robust social life on a normal year. You don't get that. For players to follow the protocols as tightly as, as, as like you said, you, your players have, you feel like that's just their willingness to say, hey, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to get on the court and get the season in? Yeah, I, it, w- w- without a doubt. Uh, you know, as I've said, we have had two pauses here, one for an extended period of time, another for one game, and either of them initiated with one of our players. And, you know, did some of our players contract the virus? Yes. But it was not initially started with them. So our players have done a remarkable job. And that's the one thing that's so that's so difficult, not just with us, but with college basketball and football, all of college athletics, is as soon as a team goes on pause, the initial reaction from the media, from the fan base, is what are these kids doing? Can't they follow a, a protocol? It, guys, I'm telling you, it's not, it's not always the kids, and I'm willing to bet you a majority of the time it's probably not. Because they want to play. This is the one thing they want to do that they want to play. And my players have been remarkable at the way they've handled themselves. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, I guess along that line, um, I guess the challenge of, of boredom and, and tedium, um, how do you, what, what kind of inventive things have you uh, come up with to kind of, you know, just break that, that monotony in a sense? Gary. With my wonderful sense of humor, could you would you have any? Do you even think it could be boredom, knowing they get the chance to come spend about two to three hours with me a day? Yeah, but boredom, Close. you know. Close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we we try to we try to make it as much fun as we can. I mean, I we are competing to hopefully get back to a final four and win a national championship. But I'll tell you this: at the same time, Gary. It, it, it is important to make sure that these kids laugh. You, you got to be able to laugh at times. Um, you know, we, we, we try to talk to them a lot about life in general, not just, just basketball. I ask them how their families are doing. Like I, I never ask them, how was your weekend? Because I know the answer. It was boring. They aren't doing anything. But I, we do try to talk about their families, their siblings, their cousins, their parents, whatever it might be to just have some dialogue where it's not just basketball. Um, you know, like Co- Coach Purcell and Coach, my staff have done a great job and we're on the road. We normally have our tabletop question. Uh, you know, if you could have a car, what, what's your best car? You know, what car would you want? And then just different things that kids can start answering questions. We start laughing and it, you, you try to make it as enjoyable as you can, but you are right. It's been it's been a challenge for them, and, and not just for the student athletes, but for all students. That this has been as atypical of a college year as anyone's ever had. Now, going to class, it re- re- reminds me of my sophomore year, junior year in college. But unfortunately, there there wasn't a pandemic, and I was supposed to be in class. So, you know, I was doing my classwork NTI, but I was way before the time. And, and that could have resulted in my, my GPA that semester, Gary. All right, Nick, hey, you, hey, you guys been fantastic guys. I, I appreciate what, what y'all do. I appreciate you covering our program and uh, hopefully We'll go up here on Sunday and perform well and give you guys a nice little story to be able to write about four consecutive ACC regular season titles. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks, Coach.